What's up everybody? Today we are going to be doing a video about Jellyfin plugins. Now a lot of you guys are probably running Jellyfin. It's the most popular way to stream media to your house or maybe to a remote uh, instance like another desktop or a phone or a TV or a laptop or an iPad or whatever it is. Um, it's the only one that does it for free right now after Plex totally decided to just take a dump on its users. So today we're going to be looking at Jellyfin. So I've got a couple instances of Jellyfin here. I have one on the regular TrueNOS thing, but I also have a Dockage instance, and that's the one I'm going to be messing with today. So this is Jellyfin on Dockage, and I'm going to go ahead and go over here and go to my dashboard so we can talk about how to get plugins. Okay, from here, I'm gonna to wanna to scroll down to the plugin section. You'll see here there's a My Plugin section. This is what's stock on Jellyfin. I haven't made any changes to this right now. So there's a few things you'll see here that are already status active. And then there's a catalog. The catalog is really great because when we come over here to these little, this little settings icon, uh, we're gonna have the ability to add other repositories by hitting this little plus. And you'll see here, I've got a bunch of repositories. You won't see these. I've, you, the one you'll see is Jellyfin Stable. I've added these repositories. I'm gonna add their descriptions in the video, in the uh, video description. So you guys can just go ahead and paste the repository URL here and call it whatever you want. It makes no difference. But once you do that and we go back to the catalog, we're gonna see more of these boxes. So now let's talk about the top plugins that you should be using with Jellyfin. The number one plugins I'm going to start with are the ones that you will already see here if you don't add all the other repositories. So the first one we're going to do is scroll down to the TVDB. This is the one right here. To install it, we're just going to click install. Super easy like that. It's been installed. The server needs to be restarted. So let me show you how to do a restart real fast. Let's go to dashboard and then restart right here. And that's going to restart our server. Okay, I just refreshed my web page real fast just to make sure that works. So here we have the TV DB and the status is active. So there's a subscriber pin here. You can put that in if you want to. It's the account is free. I have one. I recommend you go just create one. And here you go. It'll say exactly what you need to do to change things, to import the season name, to fall back to the original language, et cetera, et cetera, include missing specials, updates here. So here we go. This is going to check that. So I want to definitely make sure we're updating uh, everything. And this is cool because every two hours it'll run. And the reason I would kind of like to do this is, say for example, an episode of something releases and the metadata is not available upon release because uh, I get a really early grab. Every two hours this will come back and just backstop that and make sure that it gets added later. So that's the TVDB and you can see that right here. Next, let's add some information here. Let's go back to my catalog and I'm going to want to look for playback reporting. So this little thing right here, we're going to go ahead and hit install. There we go. So now the plugin has been installed successfully. We're going ahead and restart and come back. Okay, so now I'm in my plugins tab and here's the playback reporting. And now you'll see here that of course, this is just the test instance, so we're not seeing a whole lot of that. My users are here, my playback, my breakdown usage. There's all kinds of cool stuff up top. And here's the settings that keep data for three months. I would probably keep it for more than that. I'd keep data forever. I don't wanna worry about backing up, that's fine. Uh, so that's good to go here. Now, again, if I've been using this, you'll see a lot more information here, but I'm not, but that's a good idea of just how to get the uh, plugin installed this way. You should probably see a lot more statistics than I do. Okay, next we're gonna do more reporting. So we've already done playback reporting. Now we're just gonna do reports in general. So we're gonna install this just like that. And I'm gonna come back out here and restart. And now I'm gonna go back to Here's playback report. Oh, that's cool. So it's kind of some little tab. Let's go to my plugins right now. Uh, and we can see reports are here. And this is going to give you the reports of all the media. Uh, and it also gives activity. That's pretty cool. That's interesting. Okay, so let's go back to media. And here shows me everything. So obviously series and movies are the only things that I really pay attention to. And again, my jellyfin is empty because it's just a test. But you here will see a lot more information about all the stuff that you have in your library. Okay, the last of the plugins we're going to use before we start adding some stuff from the other um, catalogs are the webhook is the webhook plugin. So let's scroll down here until we find webhook. And if you don't want to just scroll, you can always search at the top. So I'm going to do webhook. We're going to install this. And then we're going to go do our restart like usual. All right, so here's webhook. This is very easy to do is all these um, different types of notifications you can do. So most of you guys can be on Discord. Again, I like Gotify, but if you have Discord here, we're just gonna do the uh, server URL right here. And that's of course gonna be your webhook, uh, the name that we're going to uh, 
uh, this is the server URL that we're going to connect to for this server. This is the webhook name, this is the webhook URL. We are going to enable it, and then you just to choose all the notification types that you'd like. And obviously, there's a ton of notification types here. Depending on how much you want to get bothered by your Jellyfin server, click as many as you want. But just, and that works for anybody. This is Godify too. Push bullet, push over, all these things are working. But if you want your server to be able to talk to you, which I recommend you do, um, just because I like to know what's going on, on my server, that's why it's my server, I own it. Uh, go ahead and just install Webhook. All right, next we are going to install something from a different catalog. So I'm going to go over here and, and uh, click that. And the one that we're going to look for is the one that I have here for Intro Skipper. So it's manifest. I'm going to put that in the video description. Don't worry about copying that. But I already have that added here. So I'm going to go back to my catalog and I'm going to scroll down until I find Intro Skipper. And here it is. So this line for intro skipper is like the four things that I got from that external repository. So you can do chapter creator and look at all this other stuff, but I'm just going to do intro skipper. I think it's very important because as someone who uses um, this a lot, the one thing that I don't like is the fact that a lot of times I just have to watch, I don't want to watch the same intro over and over and over and over again. So this is, I think probably should be the number one besides a lot of the other stuff that we've done just because of how much better it makes your life when you're binge watching shows. So now I go back to my plugins and intro skipper should be here. And here we go, automatically analyze, update, edit missing uh, segments and have all libraries, uh, analyze for all these things. I wanna analyze movies, I wanna analyze seasons, just like that. Uh, and I wanna enable the server side auto skip. So the cool thing about this is I can do that for everybody and force them, but I'm like, I, that's up to them really. Um, but I can do that there and then I can save it and it's really cool. I actually like this functionality a lot. I put it on MB as well because I use MB a lot. So this is a really, really useful um, plugin. So let's go ahead and add some more. All right, the next one we're gonna add is from another repository. This one is called um, Awesome Jellyfin. So you'll see it here all the way at the bottom. And when I go to catalog again, uh, I'm gonna look for the newsletters. This is what gets added from Awesome Jellyfin. So this is really cool. So basically what this will do is, and this is if you want, this is an option, all this stuff is optional. Um, when I add or remove content from the library, instead of somebody coming back and having to check every, every so often to figure out what it is that I'm adding or removing or changing, um, the newsletter function will allow you to connect this via SMTP to an existing email account like your Gmail, um, as long as you have two-factor set, uh, authentication set up and that you have a app password enabled. So once you can do that through something like Google, which is the most common one that most people use, uh, you'll be able to automatically email a list of people um, in order to tell them what's going on. So here you see the to address and you can separate, it's a comma separated list if you wanna do it. This is gonna be the from address that defaults. This is the HTML format, the scraper config. This is the SMTP config. Again, go ahead and enter your SMTP information in here and scraper in information. You can do a whole bunch of cool stuff in here, but this is a really cool little way to keep your users up to date if uh, you have many users. I thought it was a really kind of nifty thing, so I got decided to add it to the list, but it's pretty fun. So I recommend you play with that. And let's go to the next one on the list. Okay, I kind of cheated here a little bit because the last one on the list is gonna be called Jellystat. Now we already have, in terms of my plugins, playback reporting. Now this is a pretty cool plugin and I think it works really well, but some people really wanna to go to the next level with it. So if you wanna do that, you wanna jump over to GitHub and go to the Cypher Shepherd. Uh, and this is his, I'm gonna put link to this repo in the video description. And this is the one for Jellystat. So I'm gonna show you some screenshots. It's a pretty simple Docker Compose file. It's nothing too crazy. You'll see the Docker Compose uh, up here in the code. Uh, and this is it right here. Basically just two things, Jellystat and Jellystat DB. Nothing crazy. Um, and it goes ahead and he gives you all the stuff down here. But these are the screenshots. Look at how pretty this is. So this is going to be the Jellystat container that's going to link into your Jellyfin account. You got all these tabs over here. You can see all these beautiful watch statistics. I, I just think it's very pretty compared to um, what you'll see it with a plugin that's installed already that we already covered. This is pretty amazing, I think. So a lot of people run Jelly Stats side by side with Jelly Fins. It's, it just makes a lot of sense. It's really easy to connect the two. And obviously this is really simple. You see the Jelly Fin URL, an API key, uh, you just connect it and that's pretty much it. So very straightforward here. I recommend if you're really into statistics and really wanna see a whole lot of cool breakdowns of this stuff, like there's, I think this is pretty amazing to be able to see all the activity uh, and be able to like look at the libraries and look at all these, like there's just 
a lot of cool information here, organized beautifully. So if you guys want to install that container, again, the description, uh, the, the connection for that is going to be in the video description to get to the GitHub. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this has been really good because I know that a lot of people out there are moving to Jellyfin since Plex has really decided to change the way they do business and not everybody wants to pay for MB uh, to get the free hardware transcoding. So, um, well, the transcoding that's free on Jellyfin but paid for on MB and Plex. So these are just some things that I recommend you kind of bolt onto your, uh, your stock Jellyfin. Once you guys have this up and going, you'll see my stuff is still pretty quick. I don't see any kind of lag or anything like that with all that installed. Um, Again, you guys are going to see a whole lot of different things because this is just a test instance, so it's completely empty. There's nothing here right now. But now that I've got all that stuff in there, I can always go back to my dashboard uh, and get over here and start playing with these things. So, again, thank you guys so much for subscribing to this channel and supporting what I do. Uh, thank you so much for continuing to like and subscribe. And I'm hoping that you will leave a comment below about how much you're what you like, something I left off the list, something you think that shouldn't be on the list, maybe something that should be on the list. Uh, definitely give me your feedback. If you have very complex feedback, please just drop it in Discord where we can have a proper conversation. And if you want to say thank you to me personally, please buy me a coffee.